Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's episode of Game Poke, the show where we cover gaming-related topics and talk a lot of old bollocks. And today is an interesting one, you see. We are reviewing an item that was sent into the channel, but it's a book. Don't run away! Don't you dare, because it's as Sega as Sega gets. Look at this, my life with Sega. The author sent this to me, asking for me to review it, and review it honestly. No bullshit, no pandering, none of that crap. I either like it or I don't. You're going to get an honest review here. And the best part is, whether you agree, like it or not, you have a chance to win this. This can be yours, along with some other goodies that came with it. You can find out about that at the end of the video. Ha ha, now you have to watch the whole thing or skip ahead to the end. Shit. Everyone's got their own experience with video games. Everyone's got their own personal history and their own personal opinions of games. That's the way it is. I've done videos in the past that was my own sort of gaming biography. Um, the videos did well, but due to the fact that there was a slight fuck up with the naming of that playlist, um, many people went nuts at me. For more info on that, bollocks. It was complete ignorance on my part and it just made loads of people go mad. But I have had a good check through this book and it's got many little reviews in it, many decent bits of artwork, loads of cool little interesting things. But when it comes to the reviews, I will say a lot of them I do not agree with, but that's personal taste. That's fine. That does not make anything about the book bad. That would be stupid. Just because someone disagrees with me on whether a game is good or not doesn't mean that this book is crap. We're going to go through some of them. The best thing is there's Master System, Mega Drive, Saturn, and Dreamcast. Game Gear, I don't think there's any. I didn't spot any when going through it, and we're going to go through it again. I mean, hell, there's not even any Game Gear on the cover there, but don't worry, you're going to get better looks at the book than that when we go through this video. So let's get straight into it at long last. So the author, Pete Gibbons, has actually signed this book for me. I do like the way he's made it into a face. <laughs> Which, by the way, I have to point out, just about all of the artwork, bar the game covers throughout, all of it is drawn by the author. This guy can draw. I cannot, if you wish to have a picture of Stickman. That is too difficult for me. Start of the book is how you expect it. You can learn a little bit about the author, and it's quite an interesting read. And you even get a glimpse of his personal collection. I really like that. If you can't make out what this is from here, this is like a cabinet and he is painted and drawn on the doors. This is his artwork. He did the Alex Kidd. He did the Earthworm Jim, Knights, Sonic, fucking Lemmings, Puyo Puyo. It, he done all of it. But now let's get into the reviews. I said I don't agree with them. Personal preference. But this one here winds me up. Alex Kidd in Miracle World. Three stars. Are you taking the piss? Free? The only thing that's shit about Miracle World is rock, paper, fucking scissors. But I do like the layout, the way he's got that red section of just the game, the stars, and a little bit of info. If you want more info, it's all written at the side as well as a shot from the gameplay itself, in this case, the main menu. But it doesn't end there. On the very next page, it goes into even more info about Alex Kidd and Miracle World, as well as some of the other games in the series. And here I actually learned something I didn't know about. Alex Kidd and Miracle World had different booklets depending on what version you got, whether it was the cartridge or the one that came with the Sega Master System 2. I didn't know that. I know I have the booklet for the one for the cartridge. I don't know if I have the one that came with the Master System 2. So now I need that. So thanks, Pete. Thanks a fucking bunch. Booklets are a sod to get hold of on their own. Cheers. L look at this, alright, going on about things I don't agree with in terms of reviews. Golden Axe on Master System, three stars. No, it ain't. It ain't even half a star. That game is trash. It does not deserve multiple stars. But I do like the little attention to detail he's done here. It says, at some point I decided to imagine what the cover for Golden Axe on the Master System would have looked like if it featured all three characters, and he's drawn this here. That's pretty cool, that shows some real imagination, and the fact that it's like, this isn't just a book. This game is this, this game is that. Blah blah blah, blah blah fucking blah. No, that's a bit extra, that's outside the box thinking. I really like that, that's a nice touch to the book, I really do like it. 
Throughout this book, there are even extra review quotes from Sega Pro, Sega Power, probably some other places throughout, but he's gone to some effort to find them reviews and put them down. I mean, I should imagine some of them you can find on, like, fucking Wikipedia or something, but, again, went to the effort to add them. And, of course, throughout, he puts, what about? So here it goes over, Golden Axe on Mega Drive. Not a huge amount of detail seen as, at this part of the book, he's focusing mainly on Master System. But as we get throughout the book, it goes to Mega Drive, so let's zoom ahead to some of that. So very randomly for Mega Drive, it goes James Pond 2, codenamed Robocod, for the Mega Drive. A four-star game. Four stars, James Pond. I hate James Pond. So far, we haven't found one review I agree with. Should we do that? Would that make it a bit interesting to go to another one? We will in a minute. With the added info here of the console and various other games, and his own drawing of James Pond, which I have to say that James Pond looks a hell of a lot better than the piece of crap on the cover for the game, he really has gone above and beyond. Oh, fuck, fuck me. Next page. Uh, the next page. I was trying to find one where I agree on the review. Next one's Lemmings, four stars. I fucking hate lemmings. On anything, doesn't matter what it is, I hate lemmings. Bit of an obvious one here, I suppose, but Sonic and Knuckles, five stars. It has to be, it's Sonic and Knuckles. So I suppose that's a bit simple that we both agree on that. I mean, if you don't like Sonic and Knuckles, well then I guess you just flat out hate Sonic games. So, you may leave. But then we move on to the college years, and as you can tell from this, we're going into Sega Saturn territory. And holy hell, it even goes over Bug. Bug. I love Bug. Not many people got to grow up with it. I did. Here he's put three stars, and without even reading it, I'm going to go into whether I agree with the three. And I have to say, yeah, kind of. I love that game. I really do, but it is flawed. There's no password, there's no save feature, and the game is so fucking long that it just suffers miserably because it doesn't have those simple features. But he's really gone into detail about Bug here, saying with a unique game engine and amazing polygon graphics, Bug combines classic platform action with all new innovative gameplay. His mission, to save his insect buddies from the clutches of evil Queen Kadavra, features super fluid animation and spectacular 3D action in over 18 packed levels. 18 doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, these levels are fucking long. After that, we move along to Nights into Dreams. And a nice little detail here is, aside from the fact he's done his own artwork once again, which looks very cool, he's also gone into a bit of the information surrounding the controller you could get with Knights, the 3D control pad. And after that, he even goes into the soundtrack CD you could get. As well as Christmas Nights. Of course, if you're going to talk Nights, you have to talk Christmas Nights. It's the law. And then not far along, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider for the Saturn. Not many people talk about that one. They tend to go on about the PlayStation 1 version. So this is quite interesting. But the thing I really like is he's done a bit of artwork over here for Lara Croft. I kind of wish she had given her the typical Toblerone tits just for a laugh, you know, because let's face it, back then, as a kid, you're like, oh, look at her, she's sexy. You go back and watch it now. Wow, I was perving over triangles. Jesus. It's not like... A game was released then, so the next game was released after. I mean, hell, at one point, he goes on about Baku Baku, but in the corner, he goes on about Columns, the Master System version. Because, of course, the two are kind of related. Puzzle games. And this is his personal history, so obviously, Columns, as well as Baku Baku, are important to this guy. After the Saturn stuff, as you can imagine, is the Dreamcast stuff, but also a bit of Xbox thrown in there. This is his work years. Makes me laugh that he goes on about Sonic Adventure, giving it four stars. I, 3D Sonic games. It's funny how I just like joked earlier about if you don't like Sonic, you can leave. But honestly, for me, 3D Sonic. Uh, it's hard finding one that plays well. At one point, he goes on about the game Headhunter. And something that's quite interesting is he mentions a Casio watch that's linked to the game saying, the Casio watch featured in the game looks exactly like the original black and white version of the real thing, which I no longer own, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Or do a quick Google. It's a nice attention to detail. I do like all the little added bits that you wouldn't expect in the book. They don't have to be in the book, but fuck it, he's put them there. And I really like it. And right here, amidst the Dreamcast talk, he goes on about Aladdin for the Master System. 
He obviously got it a lot later in life. Well, I say obviously, I know that because I fucking read it. He says he got the game later in life, tried it out, three stars. Free! That is a fantastic game on a Mars system. It looks great, it plays great. I do agree with him, though, on the fact that there's no challenge. It's a fucking easy game. It is very easy. It can be done in about half hour. If you know where to go. But he even put down... You know, he managed to complete it on the same day he bought it. Obviously, been able to do it with half hour. So he felt like a bit screwed over, I guess. I mean, honestly, it's a game that's more aimed at kids. But I think it's a great game, and I would give it at least a four. Yes, not a five, because I agree there's no challenge, and I don't think there's any way of making it more difficult. But, you know what, I got to say, I do like the way he's presented it, though. It's the same as all the others throughout this entire book, but the red bit giving it its simple star rating, tiny bit of details, then more of a personal history of him with the game, as well as some game shots throughout. To put it simply, this book has a fantastic layout. I like the way it's got the game footage, the pictures of CDs, soundtracks, video games itself, own personal drawings done by the author, certain bits of info I didn't know about, like the Alex Kidd booklet. Cheers again. All in all, it is a great book. Would have been nice to have it in a hardback copy, but at the end of the day, I don't get to keep this. I'm giving it away for free. You have a chance to win this book, and it's very simple. You do it on a different channel. I know. Retro Gamer Boys channel. Every week, every Wednesday, we have a live at the arcade. So the next one, this coming Wednesday night, 9 o'clock in the evening, British Standard Time. You have a chance to win this. All you got to do is win the Game Guessing Guru Challenge. The rules of that will be presented at the live stream. So I hope you get to check it out. There'll be a link in the description to the channel. Hopefully the live stream as well. Hopefully you'll manage to sort it with Mike so you can get it going then. If not, I'll just add it in the details of this video closer to the time. So check back if for some reason I can't do that. But it's not only this, you get a chance to win. Remember I said this came with some goodies? It did. Some artwork. Just look at these pictures here. Again, these are all done by the auth. Truly great stuff. Especially from my point of view, because I can't draw for shit. But this guy's gone to a lot of effort, and he's gone one step beyond. He's even given away stickers. Stickers, of all things. And you know what? I'm not sure if there's a digital version of this book somewhere, but if there isn't, there needs to be. This is, this is really good. I find this to be really interesting, finding out someone else's opinion of certain games, whether I agree with them or not. You know, it doesn't matter. There's stuff to learn in here. He knew stuff I didn't. He probably knows stuff you didn't, but you probably knew stuff he didn't. Am I getting confused now? Yes, a lot. This is a truly decent book. I highly appreciate the effort involved. Is there any bad things about it? Anything that I really don't like? In all honesty, no. Even if you don't win, copy of this this copy because it's the only one i got to give away i implore you to at least check it out if you got a bit of spare money or you know someone who's a sega fan and they deserve a decent gift this could be the one thank you very much for watching today's episode of game poke i hope you enjoyed it i hope you click like i hope you leave a comment i hope you go to the live stream to at least try and win the thing and more importantly i hope you subscribe i'd appreciate that all information related to this book will be in the description for this video so you can check out any stuff about the author and where you can buy a copy of the book and all that old pony. Thank you very much for watching once again and I'll see you next time.